right, let's start from the top. Again, I apologize. My name is Heather Pellet. since most of you probably did not hear that the first time, I'm with D'Agostino Electronic Services. We had an audio issue before, so we're gonna quickly just take this program, or this webinar from the top. I apologize. Um, all of you did answer the poll question, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip that this time around. But basically what I had said to begin with is, we're just gonna give you an overview of the prevention program. Basically what it looks like, who, who is eligible for funding, what services and solutions are allowed, and then we'll run through the application process. It's fairly lengthy, so we'll kind of just hit the high points, and then we'll talk about some key dates when the application window closes, and then we'll turn it over to some questions and comments. Okay, so the School Violence Prevention Program. At following last February shooting at the high school in Parkland, Florida, excuse me, there, the Stop School Violence Act was passed and implemented. Um, under that act, there was some funding that was designated to basically put uh, security measures in school or help schools enhance their security. The program itself resembles the former Department of Justice Secure Our Schools program. Um, but it's obviously called the School Violence Prevention Program now. And it provides funding, K through 12 schools, things like implementing video cameras, security system access, access control, et cetera. All right, um, well, I'm gonna run through this, but basically you have to plan to implement evidence-based safety programs. So, so programs that are proven to enhance the security at these schools. Um, the reason why we thought this webinar would be um, informative is because this program is pretty new. Obviously, the, the Stop School Violence Act was just passed last year, so this is only the second year for the funding, and it, they've actually said they're going to fund this program for the next 10 years. So after this year, eight more additional years will be funded. Um, last year, they awarded more than $24 million in funds to 91 agencies, and that benefited benefited more than 5,000 schools and over 3 million students. So it's a large chunk of money that is available um, to, to improve security. This year, um, as, as it was last year, 25 million is available. So evidence-based programs, I touched on that briefly, but what does that mean? So basically, the technology and equipment that you plan to, to install must be consistent with best practices. Basically, has it been validated? Does it work? And does it say it's going to do what it's supposed to do? Um, research studies, of course, would be another evidence-based program. And then the big one is, um, I guess, across the country, there's public commissions and task force that are made up of school security experts. And their, their job is basically to set forth standard recommendations, formulate guidelines, to basically just set the standards as to what school security should look like across the country. Um, the National Institute of Justice Comprehensive School Safety Initiative is one of these task force. Um, and you can find more information online at nij.gov. And I'll, I'll send this presentation out to everyone following the presentation so you have the link. Um, but before I go on, I kind of want to back up a little bit to the Stop School Violence Act. So this was um, passed last year, and funding was designated to two different government agencies. The COPS, uh, the COPS office, which is running the School Violence Prevention Program, and then the Bureau of Justice Assistance. So they got some money, and then the COPS office got some money. We're going to talk about obviously the cops office and their funding but this and just want to let everybody know that there is funding available for things like developing anonymous reporting systems or um, training school officials personnel etc and that would all be through the bureau of justice for assistance so you can find more information on that on their website which is listed there all right but like i said we're going to talk about the school violence prevention program and who's eligible for that so the big thing this year is school districts can now apply. Last year, they could not. Um, it was just units of local government, like municipalities, states, and then local police departments and sheriff departments and Indian tribes, of course. This year, school districts are kind of clarified to be a public agency, and they can apply. So that's, that's big news. Um, I mentioned that the total amount available for this year is... 500,000, um, or I'm sorry, 25 million, each award would be up to 500,000. So 
So um, the, the funding would cover 75% of that, and then the municipality or the school district or the, the grantee would be responsible for 25%. Now, the COPS office has kind of said, you know, if there's a need base, um, they would look at financial situations and possibly, um, you know, waive some of that or maybe eliminate it all. So there is some wiggle room there. And then the length of the award is two years. Okay, so allowable costs. Um, everything that you see here with an abstract is, is um, solutions that DES specializes in. So, of course, your communication systems, your security cameras and video surveillance, um, access control, visitor, visitor management. Um, these are kind of our wheelhouse items, if you will, for security. Um, and there's a lot there. So. Um, additional uses of funding can be used for um, salary or benefits for personnel, um, supplies, training, travel, consultant services as well. So just wanted to mention that. What's not allowed, um, really anything to do with guns um, is not allowed. So no armored or weaponized vehicles, bulletproof vests, firearm training, radar guns, et cetera. And you can see the list right there. Um, so basically once the uh, COPS office awards the grant, that award recipient can basically either contract out the work or, or the, the funds or make sub-awards. Um, Local education agencies, which of course schools, um, nonprofit organizations excluding schools, so that would mean that private schools are off the table. Um, units of local government, government tribal organizations. Um, as long as what the funding is going to, of course, benefits schools, students, and improve security. Um, the exception, obviously, I've kind of mentioned, but no federal money may go directly to the individual school, and no money may be used um, in firearm training the use of firearms. All right, so the application process. I, I mentioned it's lengthy, and I think with all of these grants, it's, it's lengthy, and there's a lot of steps, and you have to make sure you have this and that. So I'm just going to kind of touch on some high points. Um, it, it's really a two-step process with this. Um, what you want to do immediately is register with grants.com or .gov if you haven't, because it can take up to two weeks to, to get an active account. Um, even if you have an account, you know, you definitely want to check and make sure that it is active. Once you do that, you complete a standard form 424, and you do that pretty much as soon as possible because you want to kind of get the ball rolling. Because that, once you complete that, that is then how um, the COPS office is kind of, you, you get an email with instructions from the COPS office on how to complete your application. So it, it, all the applications are, are submitted online through the COPS office. So the last bullet point here, you want to make sure you have an account with them um, so you can go ahead and submit that application. You also must have a couple things, which you may or may not already have, would be a DUNS number or a DUNS number, which is Data Universal Numbering System, and you can get one of those at dnb.com. And you must, your organization or agency must also be registered with SAM, which is the system for award management. Um, this is something that needs to be renewed annually, and it can take several weeks to make sure that your, your account is um, up to date. So you definitely want to make sure that um, you, you have, you're registered with SAM. Um, this replaces the central contractor registration, the CCR, so some of you may be familiar with that. So I wanted to mention that. Here's just another um, a screenshot I pulled off the COPS office website. It kind of goes in a different order than what I mentioned, but it, it definitely goes through the steps before you really even start the application process. So there is, part one is, is rather lengthy just to make sure you have your boxes checked and everything that you need. Okay, so like I mentioned a few minutes ago, once you submit that standard form 424, you'll get an email with instructions to then go through and complete your application. It's all done online, all through the COPS office website. Um, you can't send a hard copy, you can't send an emailed copy, website only. Um, so the sections one through four are just your basic agency information, eligibility, eligibility information, et cetera. Um, you're going forward, section six, um, background information and need for improved security. Um, 
so basically this is um, have you completed security safety assessments in your buildings um, and have they been conducted within the last three years. Section seven is the need for federal, federal assistance. So you wanna hear, you wanna explain why that you cannot do certain things without federal funding. And then <clears throat> section 10, excuse me, you wanna summarize the project. Section 12, um, you wanna make sure you, you name the schools and or districts who are benefit from this funding. So if this is especially true if you are a municipality or a government or even a state, there's obviously multiple schools and districts you know, within your jurisdiction that you'll wanna make sure that you um, explain who you're gonna be helping. Okay, so um, the, the application window is open now. Um, it closes at the end of the month at 7.59 p.m. Eastern. They won't accept late applications, so you definitely wanna make sure if this is something you're considering for this year that you jump on that. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there is, they've designated funded for funding for to, through 2028. So after this year, eight more years. And I believe it's, it's at least 25 million, up to 25 million each year. So, all right. So at DES, I mentioned we have many of the solutions um, that this funding will cover is it, stuff that we do. So we're here to help. Um, when you, many of you know on the call, you're already customers of ours, you have a dedicated account manager. We offer um, no obligation security evaluation. So we'll come out or even look at your security system remotely and kind of see where there might be gaps. Um, we'll come to your building and do a security assessment and, and again, kind of look and see where you could benefit from some of, the, some of this new technology. Um, a, a big thing is providing you pricing and budgeting that you then can use to fill out the application because obviously that the application process is not a simple one and if we can help you simplify it in any way, we definitely will, will want to do that. Um, and again, I kind of just mentioned that, but you know, we'll format your proposals in a way that kind of help you apply. Um, and then of course, you know, it, you might not be able to afford everything right away, but we can kind of offer advice as to what you should do first and, and when you should implement this and long-term planning for, for really to meet your goals in the next 5, 10, 15 years. Um, and of course, we're in it for the long haul. You know, when we, we sign on new customers, we consider them partners and we want to be their partner for the future. Um, so this is a lot of information. All of it was basically from the COPS office website which I have listed here. Um, we also have a section on our website, which is also listed, where I kind of break everything down and provide links. The, the COPS office does a really great job of having you know, guidelines that you can walk through and application step-by-step -step guides. And I think um, if you go to our website, you'll find direct links to all of those. If you wanna reach out to us, um, the best thing to do is either call that 1-800 number or send us an email and we'll put you in contact with, um, or if you already have, um, a DES account manager definitely reach out to, to him or her and, and kind of see where, where you can go from there. Here's just a, a quick overview of our security solutions, which we've talked about. And with that, I'll kind of open it up if anybody has any questions. I, again, I apologize about the audio issues in the beginning. Okay, well, thank you so much for, for attending and um, I'll go ahead and send this email out to everybody that registered or this presentation out via email to everybody who registered and we're gonna put a copy of this on our website as well. So if you wanna rewatch or check it out further, it'll be there later this afternoon.